Welcome to Music at Noon. My name is Daniel Cabina, and I find myself here in this beautiful space of the Maureen Forrester Recital Hall at Wilfrid Laurier University's Faculty of Music. We find ourselves also in the new season, in the spring season. This hall and Wilfrid Laurier's campuses are built upon beautiful land, the land of the Haldimand Tract, which is the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples, and which remains home today to a diverse community of First Nations, Métis, and Indigenous people, whom we honor and respect, and whom we celebrate and thank as stewards of this land. This land sustains us in all that we do here. And we do some fabulous things here. We do teaching and learning, community building, and music making. So welcome into this space. Today's program is a celebration of the music of Peter Hatch. Peter is Professor Emeritus of the Faculty of Music at Wilfrid Laurier. And he has been a prolific composer and creator in sound, working with, to use some of, some of Peter's language, time-based structures in sound. In addition to being a wonderful composer, as, as you shall soon hear, uh, Peter is a wonderful teacher. And during his time here at Wilfrid Laurier University, he taught many, many classes, generations of grateful students. And I am glad to say that I, I am one of, one of those grateful students. And I had the pleasure of taking Peter's Music Since 1945 class. And on the strength of that work that I did with Peter there in that class, I feel my ears open to hear the world or to use some of Peter's language again, to attend to the world ears first. I had the chance to chat with Peter uh, and that conversation, that little bit of interview and exchange uh, is available uh, to you, our Music at Noon audience, and you'll find a link to that. Uh, so I, I invite you to peruse that interview and share that conversation with us uh, after today's concert. Now, today's concert, which will be presented by Joe Ferretti, Elaine Lau, pianists and percussionists Dave Claussen and Richard Burroughs. That this concert that they're, that they're offering uh, is a co-presentation with Numus and another iteration of this, of this uh, presentation will be, in fact, the main iteration of it will be a Numus concert on the 27th of March at 8 p.m. So on behalf of Numus, I invite you to that event as well. Peter Hatch was the, the founding director of NUMIS. And this season, that fine organization, now under the artistic direction of Catherine Ladano, is in its 35th year. So we wish them happy anniversary. Today's program begins with a work of Peter's from the year 2004 called Three Shades of Blue which work, as, as you might have noticed, has had a profound effect on my wardrobe today. Earlier this week, I had a chance to sit down and have a chat with Richard Burroughs. Richard is, is of course, one of the two percussionists on today's program, uh, but also he's the artistic director of the Open Ears Festival, which has been going strong since 1998, and which festival Peter Hatch founded. I asked Richard if he'd be willing to talk to us a little bit about each of the two pieces on today's program. So here's a little bit of what Richard had to say. Now this is a three movement work. So we have Shadow, Homage, and the last one is called Cubana Cana. And so the first movement is this uh, idea of a hocket. So uh, the hocket is basically, we have an, a downbeat and an upbeat and it's, it's uh, 
based uh, traditionally on, on uh, Amadinda music. So Amadinda is a style of music from uh, West Africa where they're, they basically one person plays a, a pattern and another person plays an, an alternate pattern that fits inside each other. So, hmm. I mean, in essence, a 16th note is the pocket of an eighth note. So if you have an eighth note happening, you have another eighth note happening, but they're inside each other as a pocket. Uh, so that's basically the definition of this uh, rhythmic term. And so the, the entire uh, movement is a pocket of each other. So we have, again, split parts between the four of us, and we're constantly one note off of each other, an eighth note. Sometimes we're a 16th off of each other, um, and that gets passed around uh, throughout the ensemble. Uh, the, the middle section for me is actually quite stressful. I'm playing on glockenspiel, and I'm, the, I'm just constantly playing on the ands of every beat. And so it's very easy for me to start thinking of those ands as the downbeat. Uh, so I have to be uh, in this very heightened sense of concentration in order to kind of get through uh, this movement. It's a little, <laughs> a little anxiety inducing. Uh, uh, the second movement, homage, is, a, is an homage actually to Eric Satie. And mm. it, uh, in my opinion, it's uh, absolutely gorgeous. It's the most uh, melodic uh, movements of, of the entire uh, of our concert set. Uh, very beautiful, uh, very serene, um, uh, uh, contemplative, I think is, you know, as Satie's music is. Uh, and I, so I actually think it, it is, is very, um, uh, it, it, it was a nice challenge, I think, for Peter at the time. I think this was 1992, he said, was when he wrote this. Uh, and so a very interesting sort of uh, digression from his typical sort of uh, minimalist style of writing. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I think it's quite beautiful. And then the end is this Cubana Cana, which is just a crazy rhythmic syncopation. Uh, I get to play bongos for the whole thing. And <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot of fun for me to play, way less stressful than the other three who are in constant, uh, chaos of, of 16th notes uh, <laughs> playing uh, shifted. So uh, Dave is, uh, Dave, uh, my fellow percussionist is playing constantly without a downbeat, uh, playing on the end, E and A uh, of every 16th. Uh, and so there's a lot of shifted feels throughout this piece. Uh, but uh, we've actually, uh, the rehearsal process uh, has been incredible because we, we did think originally that this movement would be the Achilles heel for us, the one that would be the most difficult and ended up uh, becoming one of the most fun works for us. So we really are looking forward to performing it for you. Maybe that, that serves as a, as a bit of a segue into uh, the Three Shades of Blue, just in the sense that, uh, you know, here, here we are in an online space. And it's lovely to have the chance to chat with you in that online space. Um, and I'm looking forward to the chance to hear uh, Blunt Music and also Three Shades of Blue in that in that online space too. And I wonder if there's anything about or in uh, Three Shades of Blue that you, you would wish to sort of direct direct uh, to our ears or for us to direct our ears to. Well, actually I'll connect back to a, an earlier uh, question topic having to do with listening. And I'll, I'll just say, um, I'll point to the second movement which is an homage uh, to Eric Satie. Huh. And Eric Satie's music was what going to the library and getting those LPs I was talking about. <laughs> uh, it was discovering Satie's music that churned me from someone who was really more interested in rock. Uh, my first uh, um, my first album was actually Iron Butterfly, and I was uh, an electric guitarist and really into rock and so on. And then it wasn't till I was in my mid-teens that I discovered Satie and just um, still, I, I, I didn't play the piano. I didn't actually have access to a piano. Um, so it was just a listening experience to listen to the music of Satie. And so uh, this piece, you know, recognize for sure, if, if you know any Satie, you'll see yeah. the allusions to, to his music, but it's also, it is an homage. And Satie has always been a, a place, um, a composer's music I've gone to, uh, where, you know, you want, I mean, J.S. Bach is another one, but Satie and Bach, the places where you want to, you know, things are tough. You want to just kind of just 
ground yourself and say, okay, uh, I'm okay because this music's here and I can listen to it. And even if I'm not playing, I can just listen to it. And uh, so that, and, and that is kind of the context in Three Shades of Blue, which is about three different shades of blue um, in terms of I'm feeling blue kind of blue. Um, they were, they, they're all, I, they're all written within a certain period and it was a challenging period for me. Um, but, uh, they have different, different ways of, um, of expressing. I, I think there is a connection to now because I, the, when I think about it, there's this, this melancholy, a little bit of existential angst. I mean, it sort of colored all of them. And I do think we're all experiencing those sorts of things various degrees as we all have different things to deal with. Um, but there is this, I think everybody's feeling a little blue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, these won't, you, you won't, it won't make you more depressed. At least I hope it wouldn't make you more depressed. I think there also, there's a warmth in them. Um, the first one's a canon, as it turns out, ah. and uh, a canon that takes this, this little, this very simple kind of melodic idea keeps the rhythm intact and treats the first idea in movements of seconds, major minor seconds, mm -hmm. treats the same idea then in major minor thirds, the same idea then in fourths and fifths, and eventually it opens up uh, to the octave. And huh. so the whole piece um, kind of takes this one uh, melodic contour and rhythmic idea and just expands uh, through, through the movement. So it kind of builds. Then we go on to the sati piece. And then the last is a, <laughs> a rhythmic Cuban, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's it's called Cubanicana, which is their kind of their tourist brand in a way. It's a very dark uh, rhythmic kind of Cuban energy and um, a Cuban influence. There's, there is uh, the, um, drums used in it for sure. And that, that's a direct reference. Bong uh, congas, I think I used, or bongos, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so the three pieces then have that different ways of being blue, maybe. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, I, I, can't, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> yeah, it's there. I'm, I'm very excited by the people that are taking it on. So it's, uh, I of course haven't been able to hear it, although I hope to hear some of what they're doing uh, in a couple of weeks before they record. And but you know, piano duo of uh, Joe and Elaine, and then Rich Burroughs percussion virtuoso, along with Dave Clausen, this uh, emerging great percussionist. It's um, it should be good.
Peter wrote this piece in 1986, Blunt Music. And uh, this is in, very, it's very typical of uh, Peter Hatch style. It's sort of a post-minimalist uh, pattern music based where we actually have two duos on stage. So uh, I'm uh, playing with Elaine and Dave is going to be playing with Joe. And so we have similar uh, parts, uh, but the timbres are what is interesting between them. And so these kind of, it's like this um, battle of two duos happening uh, simultaneously. So this, this uh, concept that Peter looked at with, with blunt music is this idea um, of uh, this lack of sense of time to the audience, to the ear. Now on stage, we are counting <laughs> like crazy, uh, but the, the, the feel is, uh, is this sort of disjunct, boom, bah, boom, eh, boom, right? So it's this very kind of, there's like lilt happening and, but underneath this, there's this sort of driving eighth note pulse that we feel on stage. And then suddenly we have melody kick in over top of this. So huh. as performers, we have, uh, uh, Elaine and I are, are playing the, the sort of blunt music melody over top of this disjunct sense of time. So all of a sudden you, you, you come from this weird world and then it's like, and we focus in on, on this beautiful melody that emerges over top of that. Uh, and, and so this is kind of the theme that, that goes throughout the piece. There is, um, uh, there is some very fast, uh, and I will say uh, challenging lines that uh, made, me, uh, made me have to practice a lot more than I thought I was going to during a pandemic. <laughs> uh, Peter and I ha had a lot of fun talking on the phone about uh, sort of the, the uh, physical capabilities of, of having to do double stops. So uh, for those of you who aren't playing with percussion uh, or even a piano, a double stop is basically where we're using both hands at the same time. And uh, so the tempo is 104 beats per minute and we're supposed to play 16th. And so we have this very quick uh, sort of tense motion uh, at the very end of the piece. So it's really uh, uh, visceral and, and very, it puts us on edge. And, and so there's this really great driving energy to this. There's a, a, a lovely line. I can't quite remember it in your uh, notes about blunt music, uh, something about like a march, um, but with mix up, mixed up steps. That, that captured my imagination. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't recommend trying to dance to blunt music because you'll <laughs> probably end up on the floor. It's um, that, uh, yeah, the so blunt music, um, the influence, well, the, the term itself actually came from a lecture I saw that Louis Andreessen gave. Hmm. And he was referring to his own uh, early music, which was influenced by honky tonk uh, music as well as Stravinsky and so on. And I just remember he used the word blunt, and I just I thought that's so great that you just, you know, you're 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 stripping away all the the, the fineness, and you're just gonna make this blunt statement. Huh. And in a way, with the piece after a kind of a, a milder opening, um, it basically launches into a, a very angular rhythmic uh, kind of um, energy, mm -hmm. and the part that. I didn't talk about in this note that I talk about in almost all my other pieces is the influence of the writings of Gertrude Stein. So um, <clears throat> this is an ongoing thing uh, that I've, I have spoken about. Um, Stein has an unusual approach to syntax would be the, the short way of putting it. Um, and it's something that I have been very inspired by, continue to be very inspired by, a way of, of working with, with sentences and paragraphs and so on, where the syntax is just um, askewed. And um, so in blunt music, I have that kind of thing, I think, in the energy, energy of that piece. Later on, I actually transcribed one of her short stories into a percussion piece, but that's a, that's another oh, yeah. <laughs> another just another another topic. Um, yeah, so I I think um, rhythmic energy, um, the uh, ensemble itself, it's really streamlined. Like I don't really do colorful things. It's really, it is. It's almost like a rock band. I mean, it could be played by a rock band. Actually, it's mm -hmm. just 
it's rhythm and uh, a very restricted set of pitches. It boils down to an octatonic scale, essentially, and then a, a little variation from that. Um, so it's it's very, uh, yeah, I, I think it's just about the energy that propels through that. And then mm. at, at some point, you can't dance to it, but I think you can't also maybe help move because it, 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 like Stein's writing, where you continue to think you can really understand what she's saying, <laughs> draws you in, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think blunt music does that. You, you think it's going to go like this, and then it just, you know, yeah. tilts you this way, and tilts you this way, and tilts you this way. <laughs>
thanks so much to today's performers, to Joe, Elaine, Dave, and Rich. And thanks very much to Peter Hatch for the wonderful music of Blunt Music and Three Shades of Blue. Now, if you'd like to hear these pieces again, please uh, be Numis's guest and attend that concert on the 27th of March in just, just a couple days' time at 8 p.m. in celebration of Numis's 35th anniversary. I'll say another word of thanks to Peter Hatch, not only for the wonderful conversation that we shared and to which you've been invited, but also for his years of teaching here at this very special faculty of music. I never tire of, of saying thanks to my wonderful teachers, so I thank you, Peter. And I thank Rich also for the conversation that we shared around this wonderful program. Thanks, as always, to you, our Music at Noon audience, for being with us today. Next week, we can look forward to a concert of music offered by Heather Taves. In the meantime, I'll proffer to you the invitation, please, to lavish upon us your comments and questions and queries in the online space, our online sort of Music at Noon lobby space. And whilst you're online, you might take a look at the Faculty of Music's website and keep up to date with the What's Up Bulletin. You might notice there that in these final weeks of the winter term, there's a big uptick in exciting activities in which we can partake. Now, in the final weeks of the winter term, there's also an uptick in academic work and performance work, work of all kinds. So I think it behooves us to be kind to ourselves and to one another, whilst being safe and being well and making music. <laughs>